Maccabee Shani, 2 Maccabees, 14. After three years was Yahuda informed that Demetrius, the son of Selachias, having entered by the haven of Tripolis with a great power and navy, had taken the country and killed Antiochus and Lysias, his protector, now one alchemist who had been high priest, and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the other nations, seeing that by no means he could save himself, nor have any more access to the holy altar, came to King Demetrius in the hundred and one and fiftieth year, presenting unto him a crown of gold and a palm, and also of the bows, which were used solemnly in the temple. And so that day he held his peace. Howbeit, having gotten opportunity to further his foolish enterprise, and being called into counsel by Demetrius, and asked how the Yahudim stood affected, and what they intended, he answered thereunto, Those of the Yahudim that he called Hasidanines, whose captain is Yahuda Maccabee, nourish war and are seditious, and will not let the rest be in peace. Therefore, I, being deprived of my ancestor's honor, I mean the high priesthood, am now come hither. First, truly for the unfeigned care I have, thing, rather I have of things pertaining to the king. And secondly, even for that, I intend the good of my own countrymen, for all our nation is in no small misery through the unadvised dealings of them aforesaid. Wherefore, O king, seeing you know all these things, be careful for the country and our nation, which is pressed on every side, according to the clemency that you readily show unto all. For as long as Yahudah lives, it is not possible that the state should be quiet. There was no sooner spoken of him, but others of the king's friends. Rather, this was no sooner spoken of him, but others of the king's friends, being maliciously set against Yehuda, did more incense, Demetrius, and forthwith calling Nicanor, who had been master of the elephants, and making him governor over Yehuda, he sent him forth, commanding him to slay Yehuda, and to scatter them that were with him, and to make Alchemus high priest of the great temple. Then the heathen that had fled out of Yahuda from Yahuda came to Nicanor by flocks, thinking the harm and calamities of the Yahudim to be their welfare. Now, when the Yahudim heard of Nicanor's coming, and that the heathen were up against them, they cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that had established his people forever and who always helps his portion with manifestation of his presence. So at the commandment of the captain they removed straight ways from thence, and came near unto them at the town of Desau. Now Shimon, Yahudah's brother, had joined battle with Nicanor, but was somewhat discomfited through the sudden silence of his enemies. Nevertheless, Nicanor, hearing of the manliness of them that were with Yahudah, and the courageousness that they had to fight for their country, dared not try the matter by the sword. Wherefore he sent Posidonius and Theodotus and Matithyahu to make peace. So when they had taken long advisement thereupon, and the captain had made the multitude acquainted therewith, and it appeared that they, rather, that they were all of one mind, they consented to the covenants. and appointed a day to meet in together by themselves. And when the day came, and stools were set for either of them, Ludus placed armed men ready in convenient places, lest some treachery should be suddenly practiced by the enemies. So they made a peaceful conference. Now Nicanor abode in Yerushalayim, and did no hurt, but sent away the people that came flocking unto him. And he would not willingly have Yahuda out of his sight, for he loved the man from his heart. He prayed him also to take a woman and to beget children. So he married, was quiet, and took part of this life. But Alchemus, perceiving the love that was betwixt them, and considering the covenants that were made, 
came to Demetrius and told him that Nicanor was not well affected toward the state, for that he had ordained Yahuda, a traitor to his realm, to be the king's successor. Then, the king being in a rage and provoked with the accusations of the most wicked man, wrote to Nicanor, signifying that he was much displeased with the covenants and commanding him that he should send Yahuda Maccabee prisoner in all haste unto Antioch. When this came to Nicanor, rather Nicanor's hearing, he was much confounded in himself and took it grievously that he should make void the articles which were agreed upon, the man being in no fault. But because there was no dealing against the king, he watched his time to accomplish this thing by policy. Notwithstanding, when Yahuda Maccabee saw that Nicanor began to be churlish unto him, and that he entreated him more roughly than he was wont, perceiving that such sour behavior came not of good, he gathered together not a few of his men, and withdrew himself from Nicanor. But the other, knowing that he was notably prevented by Yahuda's policy, came into the great and holy temple, and commanded the priests that were offering their usual sacrifices to deliver him the man. And when they swore that they could not tell where the man was whom he sought, he stretched out his right hand toward the temple and made an oath in this manner. If ye will not deliver me, Yahuda, as a prisoner, I will lay this temple of Elohim even with the ground, and I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. After these words he departed. Then the priests lifted up their hands toward heaven, and besought him that was ever a defender of their nation, saying in this manner, You, O Yahuwah of all things, who have need of nothing, were pleased that the temple of your habitation should be among us. Therefore now, O holy Adonai of all holiness, keep this house ever undefiled, which lately was cleansed, and stop every unrighteous mouth. Now was there cursed unto Nicanor, one Razis, one of the elders of Yerushalayim, a lover of his countrymen, and a man of very good report, who for his kindness was called a father of the Yahudim. For in the former times, when they mingled not themselves with the other nations, he had been accused of Yahudaism, and did boldly jeopardize his body and life with all vehemency for the belief of the Yahudim. So Nicanor, willing to declare the hate that he bore unto the Yahudim, sent about five hundred men of war to take him. For he thought by taking him to do the Yahudim much hurt. Now, when the multitude would have taken the tower, and violently broken into the outer door, and bade that fire should be brought to burn it, he being ready to take in ready, rather, he being ready to be taken on every side, fell upon his sword, choosing rather to die manfully than to come into the hands of the wicked, to be abused otherwise than beseemed his noble birth. But missing his stroke through haste, the multitude also rushing within the doors, he ran boldly up to the wall and cast himself down manfully among the thickest of them. But they quickly giving back, and a space being made, he fell down into the midst of the void place. Nevertheless, while there was yet breath within him, being inflamed with anger, he rose up, and though his blood gushed out like spouts of water, and his wounds were grievous, yet he ran through the midst of the throng, and standing upon a steep rock, when as his blood was now quite gone, he plucked out his bowels, and taking them in both his hands, he cast them upon the throng, and calling upon Yahuwah of life and Ruach to restore him those again, he thus died. <laughs>